Hi, welcome back to the next lesson. In this lesson, we are going to start talking about the model and the data model. And we're going to cover a few different concepts that we're going to use as we build this risk management dashboard. So first of all, in this example here, the data is going to be extracted from our CMMS, so our computerized maintenance management system. So those of you that work in maintenance and in um, a field of reliability and plant operations will know this well. But we're going to go and we're going to pull that information into Excel and that Excel sheet will be used as a, a feed into this report. So in, in, in real terms, you probably would have a direct connection into a data warehouse or to the actual system itself. But for this example here, we don't have that and we will pull the information from Excel and that information can be extracted from the, the CMMS and updated weekly. Next, we're going to um, talk about the actual table itself. So it's going to be quite a straightforward data model to begin with. We're going to have just a single table and it's going to have a list of all of the repairs that are currently open, all of the repairs for defects that are currently open at the system, um, in the system. And we're going to take a snapshot each week. So each week that we have got some data, we're going to take a snapshot to say, during that week, here's the list of repairs that are currently open. And we're going to date stamp each one of those with the, the week that they belong to. Um, so that's going to be the data. So fairly straightforward. We'll just take a quick look at the actual data itself. OK, so here's the data here. And we can see it's, it doesn't have a, a particularly a, a lot of information in it. I've kept it quite simple and quite straightforward. Let me just scroll along to start there. Um, so we've got the the week and the year. So this is the week and the year of the snapshot. So the snapshot of all of the open um, work orders to repair a defect have been taken at the end of every week. And that's a week number and that's a year number there. We've got a work order number. We've got a description, which is just a generated description. We've got the pre-mitigation likelihood severity number and the post-mitigation likelihood severity number. And um, we'll get into those just in a second. We've got a target completion date. So that date is um, is put in place based on these this um, post mitigation likelihood number. So each each one of these um, numbers here has got a it's got a, an associated date or number of days from now until the future. Uh, so a target completion date. We've got a condition for work code, which tells us a plant condition that we need in order for the the job to be done. Uh, we've got the department name, the discipline, we've got a status and we've got a scheduled date. So it's really quite a, a small data set, but that's all we need for this particular example. OK, so the risk matrix. So we've covered this and if you're if you're looking at this video, you probably understand what a risk matrix is. You just want to build it in Power BI. What I've done here in order to um, allow us to identify each one of these different zones is I have put a number in here, which is a multiplication of the likelihood and the severity. So we can see 5 times 5 is 25. And we can see 2 times 3 is 6, etc, etc. Um, so that kind of gives us a little bit of a, an ability to identify ranges for high, medium and low risk activities. So in terms of um, the, the, the business process that, that risk ranks a work order, all it does is once we've got a credible scenario, so what could happen if we continue with either the equipment defect or the equipment, or the equipment out of service? What could be the potential impact on the plant? Could it be from a fact of it's happening now or it's likely to happen at some point in the in the future? Um, from likely, possible, unlikely to very unlikely. And then we look at how severe that impact could be. So for example, if we've got a pump that's um, that's out of service and we've got a backup pump how likely is it that that backup pump also fails and when was um, so what's the mean time for it to fail when was it last overhauled how often does it failed in the past and um, we can then look at the likelihood of that failing and then there being an impact on the potential of the plant to produce and that impact could be significant moderate severe depending on how how much production the plant generates and how quickly it could we could actually affect a repair if it did actually fail. OK, so then after we've done this, we do the same thing again once we put some mitigation in place. So the mitigation might be that we 
for example, if we had this pump, we might actually say, okay, we're going to we're going to run the pump that's that's got a defect. So we've still got two pumps running, but we're going to put some condition monitoring, um, and we're going to really put um, rather than once a month carrying out some vibration analysis, we're going to go and do it once every every week to make sure that we do identify any defects in the the backup pump as quickly as possible, and we can um, we can make a um, an intervention to to try and prevent it from failing. Okay, so the next concept is the pre and post the concept of pre and post mitigation. So in essence, every work order that's generated to go and um, fix a or repair an item has two risk assessments. So the first risk ass assessment is pre mitigation. So what is the as found situation? So we've identified we've got a defect in a piece of equipment. What is the the risk of this? Now, if it's possible, and it's not always possible, often, it, but often it is possible, if it's possible to put some mitigation in place, then we will also change the risk. So, so it's stored in a different place in this example, in, in our process that we're talking about here. And this will then reduce the likelihood or reduce the severity or perhaps both. So we can see here that this was the original risk here and we've managed to reduce the likelihood from likely to unlikely. Now that's now that now means that this post mitigation risk, instead of being in the red, like it was um, initially when it was found, we've managed to put something in place that's reduced it to unlikely. So we've 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 carried out some sort of activity. So that might have been we've put a temporary repair in place, or we've put some additional surveillance in place to make sure that we know if something's going to happen. We may choose not to run the piece of equipment as 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 hard or as much or as often. Uh, there's a number of different things we can do to reduce that likelihood. So that just gives us the ability to put in a pre and a post mitigation risk assessment. Now that might not be your case, and in which case you just use one of these um, when you're building a report. But the course will explain how to put this in place and how to analyse the difference between the two and look at how the, the risk profile has changed across all your defects between the pre and the post mitigation um, states. Next, we're talking about the risk grouping. So we'll talk about risk groups and we'll use that quite a lot. And this is an ability to bring it up a level and talk about high, medium and low risk. So we've got the, the ability to split this into 25 different risk ranking squares. However, sometimes when we're reporting, it is, um, it is important to see the granularity for each one of these. But sometimes from a reporting point of view, we want to bring up a bit and we just want to look at all the high, medium and low risks. So to do that, I've just grouped these and we'll identify these by using these numbers here, these kind of coordinates, as it were. Although it's a multiplication in, in this instance, but it effectively allows us to identify individual squares. And we can group these into high risk defects, medium risk defects and low risk defects. So next we've got the concept of an overall risk status. So that overall risk status was the the, the 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 actual text that was written on the front screen. So just as a reminder, here is that text here. So it's red and it's high risk of business impact failure. So that's going to be the text that we're we're going to be talking about here. So there's there's four different options here and the text will be different or the status, overall risk status will be different depending on how many work orders we've got in each one of these areas here. So let's just go through this. So it'll be read high risk of business impact failure or high risk of high business impact failure. So there's a high risk of a, a high business impact failure if we've got any work orders that are in the red zone. So defect is, defects exist with a post mitigation risk ranking in the high risk group. So if, any, if there's one or more defects exist, resist, resist, um, exist in this area here, post mitigation, so after we've put some mitigation in place, then the overall plant status will be red. And that's the color here that we're going to use. If there, we'll come back to orange because the other two are quite straightforward. Yellow is substantial, so possibility of medium severity business impact risk. So defects 
exists in the medium risk group. So if anything exists in here, then we are going to have a, an overall risk statement, which is yellow. And then finally, if we have nothing in red, nothing in yellow, we've only got stuff in, only got risks that are in or defects that are in the green zone, then low, low risk of low business impact failure. So we've got a low risk of a low business impact failure. Now you can actually, as we go through this, this will be, um, there'll be a calculated column, um, yeah, it'll probably be a calculated column that will go and um, assign a grouping to each work order. And you can decide what, what this split is going to be. I, I did toy with the idea of, of including some of these, maybe this four here and this four here um, as, um, as medium, but this is what I've done for just now. Now the yellow or the orange status here was something that I added in. And we've got severe possibility of high severity business impact failure. And this one's slightly different um, in that it's not directly mapped to one of these three groups. What it does, uh, how it um, would be triggered is if a defect exists in, in with a little bit of a type of there, a defect exists with a post mitigation consequence severity equal to five. And I felt that we needed something in between the red and the yellow because there could be an example here where we've got a work order which is a defect that sits in this one of these two squares here. So if it's in any of these severity five squares that are here, the possible it's under possible likely and very likely, then that's fine. That's going to be captured under red. But if we've got something that still has a potential to have a severe impact on the business, albeit very unlikely or unlikely, I think we still should be elevating it above just the, the normal medium risk or substantial risk. So we've, I've kept that a severe possibility of high severity business impact failure. So that's how I've done it. And it's really just to show you that you don't need to just map these statuses, these overall risk status just to one of these um, sections here, these risk groupings. I thought you can if you choose to. Um, you can do it um, using some other rules as well. Okay, so that brings us to the end of the introduction to the the, the modelling element. So we've covered the we've covered the actual specification or the requirements. We've talked about the modelling and some of the key concepts and looked a little bit at the data. We've provided a little bit of an overview of what the end product is going to be. In the next lesson, we're going to start actually building the dashboard. I'll talk to you then.